Welcome guys to another CA APM Tech Talk. My name is Omar Ocampo and today I'm going to be going over of how to troubleshoot JVM garbage collection with Introscope. We're going to be looking at what are the metrics in Introscope that we want to look at, what are the metrics that can you know help us uh, understand how often is GC kicking in, how long is GC taking, and really understanding the performance of GC itself um, and see how that might be impacting our own application. But before we jump into the examples and you know start looking at the different metrics, I want to do a little bit of a little bit of theory. I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. I'm going to go over you know it's really quick on what uh, the Java heap space is all about. Uh, you know, what the, the different tasks that it needs to do, uh, what are some of the consequences of such tasks, right? And, you know, why does it take so long? Um, and especially how, you know, heaps are partitioned, right? So we really want to understand that. So one, once we have a good understanding of the heap space itself, then when we look at the interscope metrics, they're going to they're, they're make a lot of sense. And we're really going to understand what's going on within the garbage collection. All right, I hope you find this session uh, helpful. So let's get started. Okay, let's start by looking uh, at how garbage collection works. Um, this will cover a little bit of theory um, on this. We'll start with the Java heap space. It, Java heap space is simply a memory container uh, where new uh, Java objects are created. Uh, the garbage collection is a process that runs inside the JVM, which automatically detects which objects are not being used anymore, and therefore can be garbage collected. By used, it means uh, which objects are not being pointed to by other objects, right? So which objects are not being referenced so they can be garbage collected. All right, let's take a quick look at, uh, at the heap itself. Let's see how this works. So here we have a JVM heap space. The blue is the JVM heap space. Uh, the, the rectangular uh, brown boxes represent objects in our heap space. Um, so what we want to do, we get a new object and we want to insert it. So it doesn't look like we have enough space. So GC is going to kick in, right? Garbage collector is going to do its thing. First thing, first thing that it's going to do is going to go ahead and, you know, go through the mark phase, determine which objects are unused. And once it does find them, then it's going to go through the sweep phase, right? Which is going to go and reclaim those objects. So this is, this is what, you know, our uh, JVM heap will look after the mark and sweep phase. So we have all the objects garbage collected. Now, it would seem that we we should have enough space to allocate a new object. But as the graph shows, unfortunately we don't. Because one of the criteria for providing um, um, heap space to new objects is that we need continuous heap space. So as you can see from here that, you know, overall, if we were to sum up the little blue spaces all together, we would have enough space uh, for our new object. But we don't seem to have any continuous um, large enough space to provide this, right? So this has, you know, this is a fragmentation uh, uh, of memory that has been introduced by this approach, right? By the mark and sweep uh, phase. So how does the JVM handle this? Well, it's going to compact it. Right? It's simply going to move all those live objects into a new area so they can, so they can uh, create free unused, um, uh, free continuous space in the GVM so that we can locate, you know, our, our, our large objects. We can see now that we have enough space to locate our object in the heap without a problem. Let's look now at Generation GC. So, I think it was Sun that came up with this concept of generation GC, but the idea is basically uh, based on heuristic of objects, right? So uh, they realized that not, not all objects have the same um, lifespan. There are some Java objects that have very, very short lifespans, and there are others that can last for 
the entire length of the application, right? So based on this idea, based on these heuristics, so you know, uh, Sun introduced two different um, uh, memory pools, right? One called Eden Space or Young Generation, and the other one called Tenure Space or Old Generation. The Eden Space is where new objects are created, right? With the idea that they're going to be garbage collected really, really fast. And if they're not garbage collected, because, you know, they're, they happen to not be one of the short-lived ones, they'll get promoted over time to the tenure space, right? Where um, uh, long-lived objects uh, actually reside. Um, let's take a quick look to see what, what, um, what the heap space looks like. So here we have the heap space, same one that we're looking at before, but it has been divided into different memory pools. In fact, into three different memory pools. Uh, we have the permanent uh, generation. This is a space where class definitions are stored, right? This space doesn't change. Um, it's not dependent on how much load or how many objects we create in the application. These are just simply dependent on how many classes we have in our class path and have actually loaded into the JVM. The other two are the ones where objects actually live, right? The first one, the Eden space, the young generation, is where objects are, you know, newly created, right? And when, and after, a, you know, one or several uh, garbage collection cycles, if these objects have not been garbage collected, they get promoted, okay, to the 10-year generation space. Okay, um, let's walk through an example. In here we have, you know, we have the three uh, memory pools and uh, we see we have some objects in the Eden space. Um, so what's going to happen is once garbage collection occurs, we're going to, you know, mark which objects are unused, uh, garbage collect those, and, and the other objects that did not get garbage collected, like the ones um, that have been highlighted, right, they're going to get promoted, right? They're going to go to the old generation space. Now, the survivor space, I'll talk a little bit about it. It's not really important for, for what, we're trying, what we're trying to do here, is, you know, determining if garbage collection is good or bad. Uh, but basically what it does is um, the uh, Eden space, once the Eden space identified that an object didn't, didn't get garbage collected, it's going to move it, it's going to try to move it to the survivor space so it can have a second opportunity to get garbage collected. Because maybe that object didn't get garbage collected on this on this uh, GC cycle, but maybe it'll get collect, uh, garbage collected on the next GC cycle. That's the idea of survivor space. And obviously, if it doesn't get collected uh, garbage collected on the survivor space, then it will definitely get promoted, you know, to the old generation space. Now, this this you'll see that these survivor spaces are very very small, and it's not guaranteed that objects are going to go there first. It depends a lot on how much space, um, you know, there's left on the survival space and so on and so forth. Um, but for our purposes, we think of, you know, objects living in Eden space and being promoted to all space. Okay, I want to show you guys in action what we're talking about here, you know, how we're uh, promoting objects from the Eden space into the old space. So what I did is I have um, Visual GC um, up and running against one of the application servers that we're going to be um, looking up, uh, looking into in, in a little bit. But really, what I wanted to show you here is, is the concept of um, the different memory pools that they have in here. So we have the perm, as you can see, what we talked about. Maybe I'll use this slide um, in here. Okay. So we have the perm, okay, permanent. That's where the, the classes definitions are loaded. And we said it doesn't. It shouldn't really move, you know, it gets loaded one time and it should stay there. Then we have the old or tenure generation, right? And then we have the Eden space that you can see in here, this yellow bar that's going up and down. And then the two um, uh, uh, young generation spaces. Let me go back to this picture. So there we go. So now um, you can see that um, objects are being created in the Eden space, right? So there, we create a bunch of objects and then we garbage collect it. And notice that every time, or most of the time that we garbage collect, um, there are objects that are being promoted to the old generation. 
right? This is again uh, seeing you know what we, we just talked about. We're just visualizing this. Um, I think it made it made a lot of sense to me once I you know I, I got to visualize how things worked, and I hope that it, it helps you understand the concept behind uh, um, the GC exactly you know what's going on, right? So again, so re let's recap, right? So we're generating again. There's a lot of statistics in here that you know we, we don't really care. It's just um, but what I want you to get from this is the concept of right eating space, right being garbage collected, objects being created in here, right. Uh, the eating space is populated with the object. Once uh, garbage collection kicks in, right, we cl it cleans the eating space. Some of the objects are are promoted to the survivor space, as you can see, and others are completely uh, you know are bypassed the survivor space and just promoted to the old generation, right. And this is going to go on. Right through the rest of the application, obviously, until the old generation becomes full. And actually, we just saw there uh, there was a big uh, uh, garbage collection occurring at the tenure space. Okay, so again, the JVM decides, right? It's got its own policy, it decides when it needs to kick in. But at any time that it feels that it needs to do it, it's going to come in uh, to the old generation, do uh, the same thing that it did before, right? It's going to do the remember the mark phase. It's going to do, you know, it's going to do the sweep, right? And if it needs to, it's going to do the compaction, right? All in the old generation. So, you know, points to take from here is that the, the eating space is very, very fast, right? Um, you know, it's got different algorithms for garbage collecting and, 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 um, and marking the objects. And the old space, right, is, is a lot bigger than the eating space, okay? And it's um, and, and and it's a lot slower to garbage collect the objects, right? Because first of all, we got to navigate. You know, we got to do the um, the whack of the tree for you know for a, a larger heap um, tree well, space. We got to you know go ahead and, and collect them all, right? And we may have to compact. So you know, we refer to this. These are major garbage collections and the, and the ones taking place on eating space, minor garbage collections. So minor garbage collections are really, really fast and, and that's the one we want to take advantage of. Whereas uh, major garbage collections, right, are expensive, right, because of what you guys should guys already know, understand now, right? Uh, mark, um, sweep and compact faces. All right, I think with this we're good. We're ready to go in and, um, and look at uh, our application and look at the metrics from Interscope and see how it compares um, to these metrics.